Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to UAP Tuesday. It's the big thing. Oh, man, there's a lot to talk about here in 2024 already. People are banging the drum saying all the news is coming. All the new stuff is happening. I, I found that the most fascinating thing that had popped up, and I guess this is from like News Nation, was that they aired an old video from um, it's like June, but it was a reporter from the New York Post who had a lot of claims that whistleblower David Grush's claims were not only factual, there was a lot more to them. And inside of this report, there was some crazy stuff that was reported. And inside of that, I actually brought it up to my wife, who was definitely, would go. I would go so far as to say non-believer. But the more and more I talk about it, I had a really fascinating conversation with my wife after letting her hear this. And it was something that a few different things that she said that not only had hammered down the point that Riley and I have been making on this show for the last few months here, but also another part of it, if whether or not the, the, the public is really ready for any kind of information like this at all, and if it's one of the major things that could um, keep it from ever coming out. But Jeremy Corbell is out there talking. Leslie Kane is out there saying more stuff, too. We'll talk about all that stuff and, and more and what we think about um, what's coming down the pike with Riley and myself. Our buddy Pavel had a, had a good interview that I'm going to play also. So that and more on this episode of... The big thing, UAP Tuesday. Click that button. Help us get to 200,000 subscribers faster than we got to 100. Uh, it is super helpful. If you're part of the conversation already, then be more part of it. If you just see this topic, you're like, oh, I want people to, I want to hear more about it and ask questions, then be part of this community because it helps us out tremendously. And we're excited to be doing more with the new year with you guys. So for myself, Mark Riley, it is the big thing. Here we go. All right, it is the big thing, and it is UAP Tuesday. And I'm here once again to start off the new year with my good friend, Mark Yodius Riley. Mark. How are you? What's going on? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my friend. Not much going on except all this UAP stuff. Yeah, except except all this UAP. So that's something, right? That is 2024 something. is happening, baby. It seems like it. It definitely seems like that is exactly what's going to happen. I, look, I sent you this article from, um, or, or interview rather, from it was from June that this played. And now they're, they're re-airing it. They, they yeah. posted it again which I thought was a smart move, but I'm going to play this whole thing. I'm going to play this whole thing because I want people to, to check this out. This is the, this is the interview that, was, um, that I sent to Riley that I saw over the weekend. It's posted from the uh, News Nation, and here it is. This is from New York Post author or, or reporter, rather, Michael Schellenberger, right? So here, here, here it is. In recent reporting, author Michael Schellenberger writes that multiple sources have confirmed whistleblower David Grush's claim that the United States government possesses a number of non-human vehicles. These sources are, quote, either high-ranking intelligence officials, former intelligence officials, or individuals who could be verified as being involved in the United States government UAP efforts for three or more decades, according to his reporting. Schellenberger writes that the individuals said they had seen or been presented with, quote, credible and verifiable evidence that the U.S. government and U.S. military contractors possess at least 12 or more alien spacecraft, some of which they shared with AARO or the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, quote, which AARO has refused to provide Congress. The office reportedly said it has not discovered any verifiable information and, quote, because it does not have the authority to verify it and may not want to verify it. Joining us now to discuss is Twitter Files author and author of Apocalypse Never, Michael Schellenberger. Thank you for being with us, Michael. Good to be with you. So, confirmation, aliens are real. This is exciting. What do you make of the baker's dozen of alien spacecraft that we have? Well, I think it's it's worth just pointing out that this is 
very shocking. Uh, the whistleblower in question, David Grush, used the term ontological shock, which is a little bit of jargon, but what he means is that the idea that we are not alone um, in the abstract is something that everybody, I mean, not everybody, but many people, of that, the large majority of people agree with that we are um, almost certainly not alone in the universe. However, the idea that there may already be contact or have been contact for quite a while between the U.S. military and non-human intelligence, non-human life forms is very shocking. And it's shocking for me personally. There's things I kept out of the story that I think were just too shocking and, and certainly harder to confirm. And it, But I do think it's clear that the conversation about this has progressed from the idea that the Pentagon simply has some videos to uh, a, lar a, a large and growing number of people with reason to know who say that, in fact, there are non-human spacecraft. That is very intriguing that there's things that you left out of the story. I hope that you'll continue to investigate them. I'm wondering how exactly these sources determined that these crafts were non-human. Was it the material they were made out of, the, the method of construction? How exactly did they make that uh, determination? Yeah, I mean, I think that there wasn't, honestly, there wasn't much doubt. These are, there are programs, according to these folks, that exist to not just study these technologies, but attempt to reverse engineer them. There was some, uh, I don't know, disagreement or different levels of knowledge about the success in that. Certainly, the idea had been that there was efforts to try to operate these craft or reverse engineers to create them. There's one very interesting story, which is that a major aerospace company apparently tried to involve greater civilian scientists and engineers to reverse engineer the vehicles because the stove piping or compartmentalization that exists really prevents the kind of innovation and sharing of knowledge that's actually essential to being able to achieve scientific and engineering goals. And so there was a, a very briefly floated idea to involve a larger number of scientists and engineers that was apparently rejected by the Pentagon. So these are, look, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. At the same time, extraordinary claims, uh, you don't need extraordinary evidence to simply investigate them. And the claim here is that these craft are real physical objects. This is not a mass hallucination, that they exist in specific military bases and or in or in contractor facilities and that that members of Congress could go and actually find these facilities or go and actually make sure they get their way in there and um, uh, and, and try to find these craft themselves. So obviously this is amazing that we have the craft at all, but I can't help but wonder were there pilots of the craft? Do we know anything about that? Is there anything you can say to that effect? David, so David Grush, the whistleblower, did say on News Nation that there were, in some cases, non-human pilots. What? Uh, I did have <laughs> confirmation of that from one of my sources. I kept it out of the story in part because it was one source and also I, I felt like I, I really wanted to establish that there is strong evidence that there are craft, and I didn't want to get too much into what I had been told about the the different potential of, of there being beings. Um, it's a lot of ontological shock. All right, Riley. So there's a look, there's a lot there. Oh, that a lot. There's a lot there. Now, what it's the, huge. But isn't for it me, crazy? That, this is blowing my mind. I know, but you know what's nuts is that I, so I was going back and forth with Pavel, our, you know, on the, on the ground, boots on the ground uh, interviewer who gets a lot of great interviews. We'll play one of his in just a little bit. But like, he's yeah. like, you know, that's from June, right? And I'm like, yeah, I know it's from June, but it's like there's a reason they're playing it now. And it goes back to that same conversation that we have every week is like, yeah. like, why didn't why isn't this pushed out more when it when it happened in the first place? It's insane. Yeah, it's it, it it's. It's just reiterating again and again how 
insane this is um how uh, mind bending I, I suppose is the word and then it just again confirms how you know nobody is taken seriously in the in in the the mainstream media obviously um as far as it coming back around i mean i think that's important to do because of like i feel like we even missed it and it's just another like for me punch in the face like uh, you know uh, sources like confirming what grush has said to this guy um you know david grush usually um ontological shock because of yeah. what it means to what it can mean and you know a baker's dozen of uh crafts you know i love the use of baker's dozen that's hysterical to me but like we're not overstating uh too much here this is this is huge and to have you know people confirm that you know there are these crafts to have um a source you know and he didn't go into it he didn't want to put it in the the actual report but that there is non-human or extraterrestrial remains. Uh, we, we kind of heard this. Um, it's it's probably a lot to grasp for many people. I want to believe, um, but this it just this is continues to be so big because there are people coming out on getting at least interviewed and and saying that they are sourced credible credible witnesses saying yeah. It's there. And then the Pentagon rejecting it, saying, oh, they they wanted to bring in a large number of civilian scientists and experts and share the data and share what they found. And the Pentagon's like, no. And that's huge. And that's big. And that's what we're asking for is the transparency so we can move to the next level. Yes. And it goes. So I showed my this is what I said in the beginning of the intro is I showed my wife this clip. And again, it's from June, but I didn't tell her when it was. Just told her it was recent, and she, her, her eyes kind of widened at this one. And she's like, I wish you wouldn't show me this stuff. She's like, because <laughs> she says it scares me. She's like, it scares the shit out of me. More, yeah. more so now because, like, she, it's, it, because she doesn't want it. She, she more or less said without really saying it, she wants to kind of just stick her head in the sand. Like a lot of the, like a lot of the people would, would she does, she wants to live in the matrix. And, yeah, your and I, your your wife I think represents a, a big yeah uh, contingent of people out there, including people running the mainstream media. Yeah, it, it's right. It it is. She, she wants to live in the main. She doesn't want to know. And I said, wouldn't you want to know like a lot of the questions to the universe? She's like, no, not really. Like I I'm I'm okay living in 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 how this is, and I don't want it because I don't want to add another level of anxiety in my life of what these things are and all these different things. And that it's like I don't I don't want to know that. And that's partially. Maybe we start thinking like she's like she's like there's a lot of people like me that don't want to know this stuff. And I said, you, yeah, I think you're right because it mm -hmm. turns out you know a lot of people who are watching this show are gonna be like, no, that's not true. And and I'm and I'm with you guys that I think a lot of people want to know what the hell's going on out there and, and what it is and why there are certain gatekeepers that get to tell us what we can know and what we can't. And I'm I'm on the side of transparency. I'm on the side of what the hell's going on, but. Yeah, as you said, my wife represents the side of people who don't want to know this stuff and don't want to disrupt it. And as we mentioned before, my wife's not very religious, but there are people who are that don't want to have that side disrupted. Yeah, and I, I can understand where your wife is coming from, and I, I will, I will kind of jump in, thinking maybe it's you know, I my worldview is changing because of I'm having a daughter, and um, I you have two daughters, uh, and you know the mother of your daughter is going okay got enough to worry about in the world for their sake i don't want to i don't want to go past that i can that is completely legit to me and understand it understandable um i'd like to know i'm with you we're all we do a show every week on this i, I want the transparency, transparency. i want to know. know because uh because of that very reason i think i i just think it's important to know so with that we're what is out there right well with that what, what, what are we what are we dealing with but that came back to the other thing that my wife said that she's like she the next thing she said to me was well what other outlets are reporting this she said how come i haven't seen this on the other outlets and i said that's a great question and i told yeah. her i said that's what riley and i talk about on this show every week is as far as why it's being ignored why the mainstream media isn't covering this stuff and she's like 
I think I would take it more serious if I was sitting down and watching the daily, like the news that I watch every night, and it was one of yeah. the lead stories. I said, that's what we say every week. And yes. And what people don't understand is as much as like if you're watching our show or News Nation or Jeremy Corbell or any of these people who cover this stuff, Jesse Michaels, anybody, you are not you're not in the majority where people who are catching in their news, if, if the way that this will catch on is one of many things, but one of the main things is if it's covered by the mainstream media all the time, regardless of whether or not you think, well, they shouldn't have the last word. They do. They, they have the majority of the, of the public opinion and, and, and why, and why it's, it's out there. But the other thing is like, as Riley says every week, the freaking thing just needs to land on somebody's lawn. Yeah, exactly. And let me add to that. I finally got to my father. Um, I was playing golf with him the other yeah. day and uh, we finally had that talk. And I go, Dad, have you heard about this? He he had he didn't hear anything. Right. And he is somebody that goes and reads the newspaper every morning. He's very old school. Um, he does, you know, watch the, the local news. He watches what he watches. The And it's all mainstream. And his question was, why haven't I heard about this? Right. Because I brought up the bipartisanship of this in the Senate. I named the name Schumer and Rubio to get, and he perked up. He went, what? Um, and then I brought up Grush and I brought up, you know, uh, Graves and some, some of the, you know, the, 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 the obvious stuff, I think that started all this, you know, it's like they were in front of the Senate testifying and he goes, you know, I, I used to believe in that and I don't really believe in it anymore. And then I got him. I got my father. I said, why would these guys go out there and risk their livelihood to do this? Right. And he went, you're right. And so he wants to look into it more. Um, I don't know if he will because, you know, he's like a freaking goldfish. He right. goes one way and he forgets right. what he's doing. Um, but th th that's beside the point. He, I, I can get him and I know he's, he is interested in this stuff. Um, but that's, but that your wife makes the point that my dad just kind of echoed, well, you yeah. know, why haven't I heard about yeah, this? Well, it also goes back to the conversation that I have all the time for, for people who don't know who only watch this show or watch this uh, show for the UAP stuff. Uh, normally we do like a lot of pop culture movie stuff and all those things. What I constantly tell the audience who watches that is that when it comes down to certain things that they know so much because they watch shows like mine or other shows and they're in the know of of, of certain uh, genres, let's say like the, the comic book movie genre, if you will, with like the DC and James Gunn and all this stuff. Now they go, well, this had such an impact because of this and this. I'm like, it had an impact to you and the movie going like the the movie like geek culture and the movie like uh, aficionados like those people because they're yeah. in the know in the same way that the UFO people are uh, that are in the know, but like right. the mainstream audience doesn't know really who James Gunn is. So whether or not his his effect of taking over the DC, there's some people who watch this don't even watch movie stuff, don't know what the hell I'm talking about right now, and right. it's the same thing when it comes to UFO stuff. We're in no, so there are certain names that you of I have. Seven months ago, eight months ago, Riley, if I would have brought up Jeremy Corbell to you, you'd be like, who's that? Or George right. Knapp, who's that? You start yep. to learn these names. Like the fact that people who follow politics and that follow all these things didn't know. And I've had many conversations with people who are big, like political, like junkies. They didn't My know. Yep. Yeah, but they didn't know. Like you said, they didn't know that Schumer and Rounds are out there talking about this stuff. And when my wife said that, my wife does represent that casual viewer of 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 these things in general whether it's movies or ufos like what i get my news from her she's so she is i get she, she gets her news from mainstream media when she she's got that half an hour that she can after after the kids go to sleep and she turns on the news and she finds out what the stories of the day were and they're not this is not one of them she's not checking youtube she's not checking these things. she's checking the, the the daily news to get the breaks and the scoops and that's it. She's not watching it for political like opinion pieces. She's she's just finding a half an hour show that says these are the top stories of the day, and this is never one of them. It, it, it's never, and that's such a great point, Christian, because I think that's a huge again contingent of people that have a million things going on in their life. You know, whether it's kids or a job that takes a lot of uh, their time or, or or whatnot. You fill in the blank, and they have that little bit of time 
you have to go to an easy place to find it, right? Local news, um, the newspaper for my dad, it's right there on this on his front porch every morning. That's that's where they get it. And so when they're when that stuff isn't covered, then they're they're completely outside of the bubble and and they're not gonna like necessarily believe it when maybe you or I go, hey, blah, 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 UAP, they're, they're roll their eyes right. or say that's fiction or that's, uh, they, what, what is this, War of the Worlds? You know, what are you, Orson Welles? Come on. You know, it's, uh, that's what I'm talking about. It's like this access we need to make. And yeah, do, do we have to have an alien land on their face? Probably. I, yeah, I, part of me says yes to that. And the other part of me says, I don't know, because it does seem like it starts to kind of, it's creeping into the conversation a little bit more of mm -hmm. like just certain things like even watching the couple of interviews that i watched recently i sent you that one that i've just started to watch that's pretty fascinating um and that is the one i was planning on watching the full thing i just haven't had a chance to get to it but like i said it's fascinating same, that, same. and that is the um that is chris bledsoe that he was he was on uh Recording danny jones podcast and um and a lot and the video that he said he saw did you see that part of it no, I didn't. What what is that? Your 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 voice changed. Something yeah, big. Yeah, the video that he said he saw. He said he's actually. I mean, he's one of the more credible UFO people out there. And the video okay. that he said that he saw. And and again, I'm paraphrasing. And I got to go back and watch. It and I and I, I will, if if I can find it when I'm editing this, I'll actually play the audio of it. Um, but he said that the video that he actually has witnessed and has saw was that there was a a, a pro a. a, a sphere in the air ufo and there was like military missiles kind of being launched in general not towards it but in general and the thing stopped intercepted it shot things out of it blew up these things that were gonna that were gonna at wherever they were targeted for i'm not sure and then just fucking like left and he said i've seen this he's like i've i've, I've seen it other people have seen it and it, and whether or not it's going to be released that's one of the things rumored to be released i i don't know he said other people have seen it tons of people have seen it and i'm like like that that's the kind of stuff that if it's authenticated and it comes out and you actually get that video out and if the mainstream media does not cover that i mean then then something stinks something already stinks but something really stinks and if that yeah. if, if somebody got the whole a hold of that video like that's yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna find that i'm gonna make sure that i find that clip so i can play it yeah. Um, but, uh, that's, yeah. that, that would do a lot. I would yeah. think if yeah. it was authenticated, like you said, I mean, just hearing that sounds insane and kind of follows along with the theme of these things that they kind of appear over whether it's nuclear or weapons or whatnot, you know, um, you know, almost like it's, you know, Klaatu Barada Niktu, you know, it's like we come in peace. We're trying to warn you that you're going to freaking destroy yourself. And right. so we're here to, to kind of warn you about that. I don't know. That that just sounds insane. That sounds like the plot of a movie. It, it does. And, I know. It's, um, it's hard because like and that's and that's it's hard. And that's what's so hard to get people to look and, and focus on. Because, again, I always say this. The theme is they're up there with wizards and dragons. They just don't exist. They're a part of our pop culture lexicon that is that has been going on for years and years and years. I brought up War of the Worlds. You know, it's like there's a reason why that's like a classic, you know, and people think, ah, great sci-fi movie. Yeah, I know. And it's it it's it's true because when you look at all that stuff, when you look at all of it, and you say, I mean, this is this is you and I. We've been covering this now for like six, seven months, and we still go, I don't know, that's that's tough to believe. That's hard to yeah. believe because you just can't fathom it. And people who aren't paying attention to it at all, imagine I told DJ Wooldridge about what that guy said. You know, there's no, in, oh, yeah. in no world is he going to believe anything even remotely close to it. He's going to say, show me, the, show me the tape. And even then, he'd probably go, ah, it's, it's altered. Um, yeah. So when it comes down, like it just needs to be this, and this, you get Jeremy Corbello out there saying there's going to be this dump of news. Lou Elizondo say there's going to be this dump of all this news in January, December, uh, January, February, March, April, May, all the way through 2024. It's supposed to be this gradual stuff. Gary Nolan says this stuff's supposed to happen. Um, so, you know, 2024 could be that year where things do start to come out because I'm going to play in a little bit. I thought that to couple this, what Leslie Kane actually said, I think it was also on the Hill about yeah. all of this stuff and about 
kind of the answers and about what's coming in, tw- in like in the next couple of months. And it's pretty fascinating, I thought, her her interview. So I want to play that. I'm also going to play Pavel's um, uh, interview as well. But before we do that, I do want to tell you guys, as I do each and every week, how important in order to keep us on the on the air every week and we're able to do this, we have our wonderful sponsors. And this, this week we have uh, both Rocket Money um, and Trade Coffee, which I love them both very much so. But let me tell you a little bit more about both Rocket Money and Trade Coffee. Here you go. Hey, Rocket Money. How much do you guys think that you're paying a month on subscriptions? Yeah, that's what I thought. Most people think they're ah, 80 bucks, 82 bucks. Yeah, right. You're paying closer to around 200 bucks. And that is why I use Rocket Money. What is Rocket Money, Christian? Thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you, me. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills. And it's all in one place. It has over 5 million users and counting. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year and $1 billion in total savings so far. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way. Go to rocketmoney.com slash thing. That's rocketmoney.com slash thing. Rocketmoney.com slash thing. Trade coffee, baby. And Trade Coffee is here to help you do more in 2024. You need Trade if you want to hit the ground running with your New Year's goals. Trade is a subscription service that sources the best coffee across the country, and it brings it right to your doorstep. They've built relationships with over 55 local roasters so you can enjoy their craft from the comfort of your own home. There's multiple ways to experience coffee with Trade. You sign up for a subscription or try one of their starter packs today. I love the medium roast, and they sent me the Peugeotto from the Brazil brand. Oh my God. Oh my God. I love it. I drink it every day, guys. Drink it every day. And I, you know, I've been talking about trade forever. I've been talking about trade forever. And I'm so glad that they're back. I've been using them forever. And now they're back on the show. I mean, you will. I mean, if you were in this studio, every time people walk into this studio, like it smells wonderful because I always have trade coffee brewing every single time. I love it. I love the smell of it, I love the way it tastes, I love all of it. It's amazing. So jumpstart this year by signing up for a trade subscription. Right now, Trade is offering a free bag with select subscription plans when you visit drinktrade.com slash big thing. Easy. Drinktrade.com slash big thing for a free bag with select subscription plans. Drinktrade.com slash big thing. All right, guys. Thanks again for our friends over at Rocket Money Trade Coffee. As I mentioned, I am just in love with the both of them. They help me out tremendously in my, my daily routine. So... If you're able to and you want to support the show and you want to do something good for yourself, try Rocket Money, try Trade Coffee. Link's in the description. I always pin it as the first comment in the comments. All right, Riley, I would mentioned to you the uh, the interview with Leslie Kane. I want to play that. Uh, yeah. he- here we go. Back in 2017, the New York Times published an article that revealed a secret Pentagon program to investigate UFOs. One of the authors, Leslie Kane, has been reporting on UFOs for many years and also published a book in 2010 called UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Go on the Record. Here to tell us more about her time reporting on UFOs and recent claims on the topic of extraterrestrial life is Leslie Kane. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much. Great to be with you guys. It's great to be here with you. What do you make of Grush's claims that there are craft or potentially even pilots? I can't comment at all on the pilot part of it because that's not that was not part of our reporting and I never spoke to him about that. Um, so that that's aside, but in terms of his his I guess you'd call them claims, his his allegations that there are actual retrieved craft. I take it very, very seriously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have reported on it. And not only because of what he has told me, but because of what a number of other people have told me, quite a few, both on and off the record, but mainly off the record, uh, that there are many others like him who are not whistleblowers, but have the same information. And in fact, others that may have more direct information than he does because they have been inside programs, which he has not. So I think there's a lot more to come and there's a lot more to back up his claims than what has actually been made public. 
And can you uh, tell us more about what you've heard about the retrieval of crafts that are specifically non-human? Because you know, I, I think I could understand someone saying, or many people coming forward to say, that pilots have seen objects that they couldn't identify, that maybe parts of, of crafts were, I, were, were then re retrieved, and maybe we couldn't explain where they'd come from, but the operating theory would be they were craft from other countries or parts of weapons programs or something. This sounds like specifically it's being described as non-human, that there's something indicated in what was recovered that this, this originates off-world or something like that. Have, have you heard, when you've talked to, to people on the inside, the non-human part of it specifically emphasized or just a, just a mystery? Well, we, you know, we, this doesn't originate from the U.S. government. We don't know. Right, it's a very good distinction, great question, Robbie, because we have to make that distinction here. We are actually talking about non-human, which means these have been determined to be that through whatever scientific process has been used to make that determination. And all of that information is classified. There was one statement that Grush made in our story all alluding to describing the types of processes that are, are used. I don't have it right in front of me, you guys might have it, but. The problem is for us in the public is that all of the data on that is, is classified. But I do want to make the point that he is yes, he's making a very, very distinct dis uh, distinction here from, you know, between something that's just anomalous and maybe we can't figure it out versus something that has actually been determined to be of non-human origin. There are two different things. And he's talking about the latter here, that these have actually been determined to be no of non-human origin. And I have spoken to others who have confirmed the same thing. So how would we make sense of this and the recent reporting around UFOs or UAPs? Is this a soft launch of clear awareness of extraterrestrial life, but maybe we don't want to tell the public everything so as to roll it out slowly and give them time to process it? Uh, can we understand this to be a, a soft launch of our awareness of extraterrestrial life based on the craft that we, we know that is there, that has been recovered? I mean, it's such a great question, uh, Jessica, and it's so hard to answer that. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a reporter, and so whenever I get some good information that I think is important, I'll put it out there. But I don't really know if there's some kind of orchestrated campaign going on behind the scenes. It's hard for me to comment on that. Um, and I also think, you know, the, the thing about extraterrestrial life, that's such a loaded term. I mean, if we have a craft that is not of non-human origin, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's some extraterrestrial aliens that have come here and crashed it or dropped it here. Or I think the, the actual origin of it is so could be much more complicated than that. You know, that the, the concept of extraterrestrial life or what the intelligence might be that's behind the creation of these vehicles is a big unanswered question. Um, and I don't think that's a simple one. But, you know, it is an incredible mystery and it's an incredible claim to be made here. I mean, this is absolutely mind blowing. And I think what's important about it is that that it lead to further investigation. All right. Again, Riley, so this one, that one was from June that they just re-aired. Right. So they're re-airing this on purpose. They're re-airing these yeah. to get like these these uh, videos that should have gotten a lot more notice. And so got, like this is, again, from right around where the hearings were happening and the things that Leslie Kane was getting involved. That was that was they were talking about softening people up before the yeah. Schumer stuff, before all this other things, before it. And so it's, it is more relevant and it seems to be, and Ross Colhart is every, is very much involved in, in news nation also. So I'm so sure that they have a very, very clear plan of the stuff that they're going to be involved with and the stuff that they're going to be pushing out. But, you know, again, a, a, a an interview that was from June, but what, what do you get from Leslie Kane's um, interview there? Oh, so much. Yeah. You know, I know that there are people that will probably say, you know, well, you know, she was talking about the big things that stood out to me are like off record stuff. And uh, ah, well, you can't really trust that. And that that to me is just more interesting because she said there's more info out there with these inside programs um, that are probably hopefully going to come out. Um, and it's just about these when people are off record, off the record right now, I think it's just for their own protection. Yeah. But there is something there. And and the other thing that really stands out to me 
which is the 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 common stuff that we talk about like these things aren't necessarily like martians from outer space you know they're not when they say extraterrestrial i think that that couches it in a way that we can understand it right okay they're they're not of this world and then our pop culture classified them as like aliens from another planet sure. or xenomorph or this this or that the implication to me is that this is this is this is stuff we can't even fathom i know our human brain yeah. can't even fathom because it it's sooner or later we're gonna have to follow the science on this now whether they're interdimensional they come from the ocean they are um <clears throat> you know walking amongst us in a different plane of there's existence. more than one there's more than one right that that is just absolutely insane to consider and that's i've mentioned it before is why my worldview is changing mm -hmm. if these things are in a different plane of existence interdimensional you can start to follow physics and you can start to follow and, and look into theories and, and, you know, of people way smarter than me that are like, well, you know, if it's this, this or that, you know, you can follow the science there. Um, it, it's so hard to just wrap your head around. So to just dump it all out there is one thing to gradually release things and gradually try to get the populace to consider this is a whole nother story i believe yeah. but it just it, it blows my mind it, and extraterrestrial whatever the remains are um i i don't believe one bit that they're coming from mars or you know a galaxy because that's the biggest thing people will say oh they can't come from you know millions light of speed, light okay. years away and light speed and this this and that wormholes blah whatever you want to say no i don't believe that i believe that there is something that could possibly out there that our human tiny little acorn brain can't fathom no matter how many pictures you show me right it's yeah. just something that we're gonna have to like follow the science on this i hope or just it's, just, it's mind blowing well it's, i mean it's I, like, i'm talking myself in circles well, right there's now. a lot of things that they talk about where when it comes to um how we also as a human being see ourselves in the top of the food chain and we don't want to imagine ourselves that we're not Right, that's part one. Yeah. And then if we don't have this understanding of the same idea, like if you see a, like a cow walking around, if you're driving through, you know, wherever you're driving and you, you don't look at that cows and you keep going. You don't stop and yeah. wonder what the cow is doing if the cow notices that you're there or the cow, like you're, you're not thinking about the cow because the cow is like, you know, unless the cow gets in front of your car, you got to move around the cow. But you don't think about the cows in that way. In the same way as you and you walk by and you just, there's bugs and stuff, and you, you just say, oh, the bug's annoying me, get away, bug. But, or, or you just walk by the bug. And you don't want to be thought of as the bug. Or guess what? Right. The bug doesn't want to be thought of as the bug, too, because the, the bug doesn't want to be dodging feet all day long, right? <laughs> and yeah. when you're, you don't want to think about the fact that you might not, that there might be the, like the, 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 like the dumbest, like the, a, a fish is, like, like one of the dumbest the goldfish, the goldfish, the dumbest thing that you could possibly think of, right? Um, yeah. Or people on reality TV, either one you pick. Um, <laughs> but out of the but but the goldfish and the goldfish is just swimming around doing this thing, not paying attention to anything, and not, and we don't want to be thought of as goldfish, right? But no, what if we I, are? What if compared, like if you look, if you compare what a goldfish knows as opposed to what the smartest human being on the planet knows and it's not even you you, you, you even have the conversation but yeah. we won't fathom the idea that that could be the same thing somewhere that someone else knows has where we as a human species figured out how to manipulate energy to create a nuclear bomb there were people smart enough to do that and and did that that there aren't there isn't a level of intelligence that could figure out how to maneuver through because what people also realize or, or think not realize but incorrectly think is that the way that time works for us is the way time works for everybody nope yeah nope and yeah. and so time could work it's like oh these things have been around thousand of years well ten thousand years ago to them could be tuesday and 2024 <laughs> could be two it could be wednesday yeah you, we don't yeah. you don't know I, I don't know that for a fact but i'm just saying it's not it's just this 
I know for a fact because I because you guys are just talking about movie stuff. No, I'm talking about physics and the thing, the way that things mm. th things that are possible that we don't know how to do. But yeah. I just find it so fascinating that whether it's a Leslie Kane, Michael Schellenberger, these people that are talking to like high level security people that all say, "Yeah, we have this stuff." We ha we we mm -hmm. there like many people have have told the various reporters that there's reverse engineering and not even the same. It's not like one group of like four people going, hey, let's tell them that we have this thing. It's like different people that don't even know each other that right. have heard things throughout the year, of course, of like 70, 80 years. And yet, yeah. like I'm telling you, I, I know it's repetitive, guys, and I understand it, but I'm going to keep saying it. Um, if this story, if Leslie Kane was on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, any of the big ones, talking the same thing and they gave her 10 minutes to talk to the top reporter of each one of the shows and was on each network you know three times a day and all those types of things it'd be a very different conversation with inside the the, the human populace right now absolutely i mean the biggest hurdle is, is convincing people that this could be right I and mean, you brought it up again and we we were talking about it maybe last week but um something really hit me in, in our conversations and I went back and looked it up. So I knew what I was talking about essentially, but like Galileo is the guy that went first off in 16, I believe 10 mm -hmm. was saying he looks at it through his telescope and he looks at Venus and it, and it had the same phase as the moon. And he kind of surmised that, wait a minute, they're, we're not, they're not revolving around earth. Right. right. We're revolving around the sun. And that caused a big freaking deal because inherently humans want to believe that we are the top of the food chain. As you said, that we are the center of the universe, that everything revolves around us. That's human nature. And when you put that into question and say, nope, you know, it's actually whatever it may be, you're going to get people to push back. Well, it's the same thing, right? But it's, a, it's the same thing I said about the cows, though, right? As where Correct. Well, but, yeah. but, but the thing is this. When they go, well, if the aliens are here and these things are here, well, why don't they get involved? Why don't they talk to us? Do you stop if if you see two cows fighting in a farm? Do you stop and pull over the car, and and help them, or you don't give a right. shit? You go about your day, like yeah. like we we are so arrogant in the way that we think, like oh well, they'd want to talk to us. Maybe we're absolute morons to them. I mean, I I would understand that if that's what they thought. Like just turn yeah. on the Florabama Shore on MTV they, right away. They, mm -hmm. they tell tell Jim Jim Zom Zom to turn the ship around and get the hell out of here. I, I yeah. like I get it. Um, yeah. But what are the dumb humans doing today? Right. They blow themselves up. No. Well, if they do, just stop it. Just stop. Like shut down one of the nuke things and just don't. Just stop it. I got to go into the ocean in five minutes and I don't want to deal with what these morons are going to blow themselves up. Or they're going to shoot a rocket. Or shoot it down. And then, you know, whatever, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, they, they, it's because the other thing that we want to assume is that we've been here forever. How do we know they haven't been here forever? I, they, they weren't here first. You don't know, you don't know anything. That's, it, that's my point right. is you don't know anything. Um, but that, that's the theme. That, yeah. that should always be the theme. Oh, yeah. We don't know anything until we know, until we have some science to back it up or we see it with our own two eyes. Right. And. We'll continue. Look, this is like if we would have been doing this show five years ago, you and I would be looked on as completely kooky people. There's no doubt about it. Correct. There are still Correct. people who tune into this and go, ha ha, LOL, uh, you know, uh, alien UFO stuff. Ha ha ha. But it's less. It's it's less. The people that are watching this show are people who are really um, like want to know curious. more about it, curious about it, found it. Um, recently been watching for a while and then there are those people that slip in like, okay here we go less ufo stuff more uh dc and marvel stuff and and that's and that's fine and and what i tell those people is instead of writing that just don't watch on tuesday but <laughs> what i will tell you though eventually you're going to start seeing people was this once the first network actually the the, the mainstream network acts responsibly responsibly and starts actually reporting and, and gets away from the fact that they're probably they're probably also controlled by some of these big um, companies that are that are the same ones that to had Mike Turner, you know, uh, block this thing. They probably are very much controlled in the same way, and I wouldn't be surprised. But speaking of yeah. that, Pavel, our um, our interviewer, 
he had a he had a chance, and I have the full interview linked in the description. You want to check it check out his interview. But he had on um, Steve Bassett, who's the executive director at the Paradigm Research Group, and he asked him this question. He asked him the question about the mainstream media, and I want to um, I'm going to play I'm going to play that portion of the interview, and then you can check out the full interview um, below. Why do you why do you yeah. think they've been the bigger bigger networks have been so away from this uh, generally? You know, because I know there's a New York Times article and some other uh, smaller networks, let's say. But why do does the legacy media stay away from this, especially since 2017? Because the evidence has been so overwhelming yeah. outside of their, those networks. What do you think that is? If you go to my website, paradigmresearchgroup.org, and you go to resources, which is on the menu, and then you... You you slide on down to print media archive and you punch on through, you get to the print media archive. And what you find there is essentially it's all print media coverage of this issue from regular press, a reasonably professional press. That, you know, that includes the New York Times. It also includes the Daily, uh, uh, the, the Daily Express and, and a number of uh, you know, what we'll call news tabloids in, in, in the UK. It includes a, a number of entities here, which are not what we'll call like a legacy, but they're important. They have the Daily Wire and Newsmax and all this stuff. Okay, so it's we're up to eighteen hundred articles. They're happening so fast, I cannot get them logged in fast enough. It's the most ever that I have curated ever. Now, when I say eighteen hundred articles, that's that doesn't mean there weren't more. There's 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 twice that easily, but on much more fringe or less substantive media. And so I, I, and it's repetitive. So I, I, I leave those out. So 1,800 relatively significant articles, largest ever since I started doing this. And it takes the total number of archived articles there to about 15,000. So there's 15,000 articles there that in fact is all straight journalism about this issue. They have covered it. I assure you, they've covered it all. They just haven't investigated it. Uh, and, and nowadays, there's maybe one what I call a uh, debunk piece or skeptic piece out of every hundred articles. It's about 1%. So there's 1800 articles up there. Maybe 18 of them would be considered to be kind of debunkers. And a couple of those pieces are really ridiculous. And I'm, I'm going to enjoy getting back to them uh, and, the author <laughs> and, 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 and pointing out, gee, uh, a bad day you had there. So uh, there is a huge amount of coverage. But interestingly enough, ABC, NBC, CBS News. Now, I'm not I'm not really covering what they they put up in just pure video, but I sort of am because the way it works in terms of my search abilities is that if they put up a, a video, uh, it will turn up in the search. And so I end up well, putting that page up. There may be no text at all, but it'll be a video. ABC, NBC, CBS News for, for the entire history of the truth embargo have been the most compliant. In other words, they've just pretty much backed up the government on this. Not going to touch it. If we do, once in a while, no big deal. We can't look like we're completely idiots and so forth. Now, they they need to respond to that. I'm, I'm looking forward to when they're actually willing to talk to me, I, to asking them some questions about this. How did that happen? How is it that these other newer publications are all over this, and you guys who have all their vast resources are still sitting back? How tight are you with the national security state? I'd like to know. We'd like to know. Because if you are, and there's a lot of stuff you're just not going to cover, just let us know. Just say, hey, yeah, we're not going to cover things like that. You know, it's like we're just trying to play ball. Right? They're trying to protect the country and whatever, and we don't want to bother them, and so we'll cover other stuff. Let us know. Then we'll go understand that. Okay, fine. But if you're acting like you are the premier legacy media, and then if something profound is happening, you come to us, then you're making a fool of yourself and insulting our intelligence. And yeah. so, yeah, ABC, NBC News. But if those outs, once you step out of that, now in terms of the, in terms of the major papers, the New York Times and Washington Post, particularly the Washington Post, have done a lot more coverage than people know. 
And so if they go and they they search through my my print media archive, they will find scores and scores of articles. The New York Times not quite as much, but it's getting better. Okay. Uh, the 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 news tabloids in the UK unbelievable amount of coverage. I mean, everybody in the UK knows everything about this. It's fantastic. Times of London, one of the worst in the world. The Times of London, the the ultimate legacy publication, only occasionally just deems to step down into this issue with some tidbit. And usually, it's a debunker shot. They'll need to answer for that. Okay. Uh, and then in the US, and this is... This is not surprising. Uh, there are a lot of major papers in the U.S. In the old days, there were just a couple of major papers and a bunch of dailies, right, from the other cities. This goes about the 40s and 50s. Then it kind of changed. Now, there's some pretty sizable papers in some of the more sizable cities, but it's still the case that the Washington Post is the, the political paper of record, the New York Times is the kind of national paper of record, and the Wall Street Journal is the economic paper of record. And, 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 uh, and so the Chicago Tribune and these other papers are not trivial, but they're sort of like the dailies of uh, years going by. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that these other, you know, whether it's Dallas Morning News or whatever, they just don't bother to cover it much because they know that the big papers will. If it's a big enough story, they'll cover it, and they, so they don't need to do it. And thus, they can kind of stay out of the UFO area without, you know, impeding, I guess you could say, the the historical process or whatever's going through their mind. It's a mistake. They occasionally do a piece. They're up there. But of the major papers in the United States, bar none, the two worst, absolutely, as if they're operating from a cave right, or or something, is is the Los Angeles Times and the San Francisco Chronicle. Almost nothing. All right, great job once again by our buddy Pavel. You can watch the full interview. Pavel. He's the best. So you can check out that full interview. The link's in the description. He's, it's it's pretty detailed. Um, but yeah, I think he's, he's spot on, and I think that's what we're saying, though, Riley. It's like, clearly, the government's like, hey, no, no, no. Like everything else, you want to go right. after, you want to go after Hunter Biden, you want to go after Trump, you want to go after someone so... Fine, no, no, no. On this one, you you just can't do it. And they're like, okay. like occasionally you can if right. you dive in, right? Because you don't right. want to look like that's when they do, and it's that's when it's that wink and a, you know, it's a passing mention, and it's always at the end of ABC World News was my was my biggest example of this. They go, they cover everything until that very last five minutes of the show. They touch on the hearings, and then they talk about the dog. That's on a surfboard. And go, right. We have our hero of the week, and that's it. That's it. You know, because the passing mention is like not given a lot of credibility for their audience. They're like, eh, you know, we're we're, we're just gonna kind of just bury it over here. Right. People think it's so that makes a lot of yeah. sense because they still live, yeah. people think it's kooky enough. We don't have to cover it. No one's really gonna ask us to do it, and that's why I can yeah. tell people like. Don't worry about the letters to the senator. Keep writing those letters to the network. Keep talking. Keep sending tweets to the network. How come you guys aren't covering this? How come you aren't covering that? That's the kind of stuff that that's what I want to see. That's what I. That's the questions because, like he said, I said said the same thing. He's like, they're not even mentioned. They're not even. They're not even addressing it. They're not even addressing like, oh, we're not covering this because of this. They're not covering. I mean, nothing. Nothing. The fact, yeah. like they covered the hearing for like a little bit. They had to. They had to cover the hearing. It's like, how do you not cover that hearing, at least on a little mention or something, right? Which still sure. should have been extensive coverage, but little mentions. And how they barely mentioned uh, the Schumer round stuff at all. And again, even emphasizing, obviously, if you're watching this show, you know that Riley and I, we are believers. And we believe in this stuff. And we believe in that, that they do have a reverse engineering program. We do believe in all these different things. But even if you are a skeptical news anchor and you are doing a report you are irresponsible to not cover the freaking Senator Majority House Leader addressing Congress and saying we need more transparency on this stuff. It's a story, guys. It's a story. It's a it's, it's a, a story. huge story. It's a story. And it's a pelican. I would like is to, what it is. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and I, I echo that sentiment of like, what is the relationship with these? kind of the CBS's, NBC's, ABC's yeah. with the like 
national security government stuff. Like that's something he wants to ask them. And I want to know yeah. because that it's, that is way too coincidental fishy. There's well, a lot stinks. of smoke there. Where's the fire? It stinks. And, um, and it and, stinks. <laughs> and we have more to talk about too. Speaking of Pavel, I want to have him on. We were supposed to have him on this week, but I couldn't have a chance. I was trying to figure before Riley and I went on. I was trying to figure out audio stuff and with the new year and all these things. It was just hard for me to to do. And um, he's he's going to be joining us. And like the one thing that I really wanted to talk about. There's a lot of things that uh, uh, people inside of this community you'll hear more and more inside of conversations is the idea of like actual like consciousness and what the idea of consciousness is and. Um, how it's related to these things and how in general certain things that with the with the with the mind itself and how that works and and he's been studying this stuff for quite a while so I'm very interested to have him on so Riley and I can talk to him we're gonna try to have him on next Monday uh, next Tuesday rather to um to have the conversation um with him and then see right. and there's other interviews that, that he and I are going to do together that he's been able to kind of line up and and so we'll have him on to talk for a bit so we'll have Pavel on next week um but that's our show for this week man enjoy your new year happy new year to everybody thank you for joining us and please leave your comments click the like button it helps out tremendously uh, obviously uh, our sponsors we have the patreon that we do we're going to be doing one uh, extra uap show per month um on the patreon but to keep the conversation going and you want like Riley and I are and not anywhere near like experts and we're just people who are asking questions and we want to represent the average person who's just wants to know what the hell is going on we want to be kind of like the 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 people who are still plugged into the matrix we want to help them get unplugged that's really what it is. We want to help them get if, yeah. if they choose that they want it. If they want to know these information. They want to know certain things about just to ask these particular questions. That's what we want to do here because I think the world's a lot bigger than we actually give it credit for. So, um, Riley, where can the when the people find you? You can find me on the internet at Riley around R E I L L Y around on all of them. There you go. All right, thank you to Mark. Thank you to you guys. Hit that button. Help us get to 200,000 subscribers faster than we got to 100. Appreciate you. We'll be back here uh, next Tuesday. And oh, if you like movie stuff and you like all those other things that we do here, please check out the channel in general. But for UAP Tuesday, we'll see you next week. Peace out.